Hello, Chris Sexton with Team Synergy here. Welcome to day one of my Synergy N7 build video series. Uh, tonight we are going to go through a lot of the sub assemblies. I'm going to pull apart and uh, put together the transmission, the tailbox, the head. I'm going to put the fan shroud um, mounted to the motor. A uh, little minor trimming done there and needed there to run the big block 105. We're going to do that. I'm also going to pull the clutch stack apart and uh, show you guys how to change the pinion if you need to change the pinion and uh, get this thing all Loctite and ready to go. Um, I get a lot of questions about um, my approach to build the tear down and putting the heads together. Um, so this time I think the first video I'm going to devote exclusively to the sub assemblies and get everything, um, all these, all the the head, the tail, the transmission, that stuff, all ready to go. And then tomorrow night, we'll start putting it all in the box. So sit tight. I'm going to um, take everything out of the bags, lay everything out. Uh, when we come back, I will have the um, transmission pulled apart. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've got the torque tube front transmission out. We're going to start with this tonight. Um, before I take it apart, I want to touch on a couple of things that I get a lot of questions about. Um, first is tail. Um, gear ratio and target head speed. Uh, out of the box, the N7 is geared for most 91 to 105, even the YS120 um, motors, for an ideal head speed of in the 1650 to 2050 range. Uh, with that, because it, that is a lower head speed than a lot of guys run on, 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 were running on their E7s, with the E7 SE, Matt developed the 4.9 to 1 tail ratio. That's what we have here. It's an 11 tooth spur gear here with a 54, 54 tooth spur gear on the auto rotation hub. Should you decide you want to either run a higher head speed or maybe put a 600 boom on it, 600 torque tube and run the um, run it as a 600, you're going to need to slow that tail down. You don't want to spin the head at 22 to 2300 RPM uh, with a 4.9 to 1, the tail is going to be going too fast and you're going to have, um, you know, it's just a waste of energy back there. So you can adjust this, uh, just like the E7 SE and the E5, you can change out the spur gear, change out the auto rotation gear, all of the different options are available to you. You can run 4.5 to 1, 4.0 to 1, or the 4.9 to 1 on the tail. Very versatile in that regard. The other thing I want to talk about, and this comes up a lot, there have been a lot of questions about, um, see a lot of people having trouble losing this pin. I'm going to try to get it on the camera, see if I can make this camera focus. But right here is a pin that goes through this um, gear, through the shaft, and out the other side. That pin keeps this gear in place. Well, what holds that pin in place is this screw right here. While this screw is actually serving two purposes. This lock nut keeps the shaft itself from backing out, but the threaded area of that lock nut is actually a set screw. You pull that whole thing out. And I'm going to try to keep that washer from falling out. This set screw goes down into the shaft and locks up against that pin, keeping that pin from coming out. It is very important. It's noted in the manual. It does get missed occasionally. I wanted to point that out in great detail. Do not forget to lock tight that set screw and make sure you run it all the way in and engage that pin well. That will keep that pin from falling out and then you're going to use your nut driver to adjust the preload on those bearings with the, this uh, nylock nut. Very, very, very important. If you forget to do that or miss that, that pin comes out in flight, there goes your tail authority. Uh, it's noted in the manual. It still comes up on the forums periodically. I wanted to take a second and show that in much more detail than I ever have. Well, right now I'm going to cut the camera and tear this down from the factory. None of this is Loctite. As you can see, I can take it all apart. Very, very important. We take, we tear this down, get everything Loctite, get it all back together, get that pin set. Uh, when we come back, I'll have it all apart, and uh, we'll talk about putting it back together. Okay, for this part, I've zoomed in a little bit. Uh, I want you to see this really well. What I have here has got the side plate off the torque tube transmission. Uh, this torque tube transmission is just a couple of pieces of carbon fiber um, bolted to each side of the uh, aluminum bearing blocks. You've got a bearing block, um, two bearing blocks for the uh, actual drive gear and then a bearing assembly 
for the uh, trans the torque tube uh, drive gear. Now, I recommend you only pull this apart one side at a time. Some there are only four posts that go out to the frame, but then there are also four more screws. The posts, the set, the the threaded rod, the post screw into go all the way through the carbon fiber and the metal. If you put these posts in the wrong place, putting it back together, it's not the holes aren't going to line up on the frame, and it could cause you some headaches. So just a quick assembly tip: take one side off, pull these um, posts, these um, uh, long threaded rods out, make sure they're locked tight as well. Put this side back together with this side as a reference, so you're sure you got the posts in the right place. Then flip it over and rebuild this one. Just a quick tip: if you tear it all apart on the bench and you're not sure, the manual does show which post goes where. It's just a little easier if you do it one side at a time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera. When we come back, I'll have this all Loctited and back together. Alright, all back together. Everything Loctited. Uh, these outside screws are just loose. Those are the ones that actually go through the frame. Those are obviously not Loctited at this point. Uh, set screw Loctited. Washer and jam nut pulled up snug. Uh, all the posts are set. Gear mesh, I did verify the mesh to make sure I've, um, everything looks clean there, it's nice and smooth. Um, machine tolerance on this stuff is very, very tight. Matt does a really good job um, holding those guys to their tolerances. So I'm yet to come across one of these that did not mesh. Um, <clears throat> it's With these monster 1.25 modulus um, CNC Delrin gears, it, it is possible for the drivetrain to seem a little snug out of the box. Um, that's just going to take a couple of flights and it'll smooth right in but this one is very smooth mesh is perfect this is ready to go in the trans in the helicopter next we're going to talk about the clutch stack uh, there are a couple things in this clutch stack I want to talk about um, first of all I'm going to tear it down show you how to change the pinion if you want to change the pinion uh, show you the bearings inside here um, when we put it all back together we're, of course we're going to lock tight the pinion on Loctite these bolts holding the uh, bearing caps on and of course um, I'm going to use red Loctite on these uh, set screws for the starter shaft. I don't like that to come apart. I'm a big fan of using red Loctite on things that can cause me to crash. Um, well, the, this coming off will probably not cause you to crash. Um, it'll really ruin your day if you go start, start your helicopter and this is missing or loose. So uh, I'm going to cut the camera and tear this guy down. When I get back we'll talk about the different pieces. Okay, as you can see, I now have the clutch stack assembly uh, dismantled. Um, there are several parts here I want to talk about. Um, first of all, the clutch bell itself. Um, this is a pretty important piece. This is what actually engages the clutch. Uh, the clutch. The liner is pre-installed in these. There's no need to worry about installing that. Um, this piece is uh, all CNC aluminum, very straightforward. Uh, nice thing about the synergies, and I talked about this briefly in the unboxing video. Uh, if you guys have not seen this before, the RPM signal magnets actually go in the clutch bell. Um, this has a couple of advantages to me. One, uh, you're not having to mess up the fan. You're not having to worry about adjusting the gap on a sensor through a fan shroud. Um, the fan is more difficult to balance because it's plastic so you don't want to worry you don't have to mess up with the, the mess the fan up trying to get the magnets in piece of cake the other advantage this offers is this is where this is located in the helicopter and this will become more um, eleva e um, evident later if you have an rpm sig sensor signal issue it's real easy to see the gap when you get this all put together the sensor is right here you can actually set the gap get it where you think it needs to be before you ever put this assembly in the helicopter it's just much easier uh, we talked about before, the N7 comes with a 17 tooth helical cut pinion. This is a custom helical cut. I, I am not um, sure of the degree of the slant, um, but it is a proprietary um, uh, value that Matt has done a lot of testing with. Uh, the purpose of this, va of this slant gear is not only to reduce noise, but it also maximizes the amount of gear that is in contact with the main gear at any time. It just really helps with power transfer. Uh, this is threaded on both ends. If you replace the pinions, um, this is 17 tooth, let's say you go to a 19 or a 20 tooth, um, 19 tooth, excuse me, to get the head speed up, this is all you're going to have to replace. You don't have to buy the whole clutch. Um, this just threads into here. It's a standard righty tight, lefty loosey. Because of the, the motor turning counterclockwise, um, there's always tightening force on here. I am still going to put some blue Loctite on those threads. 
I'm not going to go gung-ho. I just want to be sure that's nice and tight. Uh, from the factory, this is pretty simple, pretty snugly. When you go to remove this to Loctite it, I strongly recommend you use either a strap wrench, or since I couldn't find mine, I used one of these Velcro straps, cinched up nice and tight, and then used put my pliers on this so it didn't damage the threads, the teeth on my gear. Come apart pretty easy. Of course, you've got a starter shaft that goes up through the entire assembly. Um, this pinion comes up through the um, main mount for the clutch, like so. There's uh, two radial bearings, up, in, upper and lower. Those are pre-installed from the factory. There's nothing you really need to do there other than put them together. And this doesn't want to... It's a snug fit for sure. I'll put that back together in one second. This guy right here is, a, is the nut that goes on here that holds the pinion preloading these bearings. Uh, now it says in the manual to snug this up, do not over tighten this. You do not want to stress these radial bearings and cause premature failure. Um, but you do definitely, definitely want to put Loctite on this nut one, one, for, so when you snug it up it stays there. And then this cap covers the nut, the pinion nut. It does have a, a smaller step down bearing for the top of the starter shaft to come through. And then the um, hex key adapter has two set screws. There are two flat spots on this starter shaft. Make sure those set screws line up to the flat spot. Um, I will again will use red Loctite. That's not going to go anywhere. With both set screws on a predetermined flat spot, it can't go anywhere. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and when I come back I'll have this fully reassembled. Alright guys, all back together. Um, I have not put the RPM sensor bracket back on yet. I'll do that after I mount the RPM sensor. Um, probably get to that tonight. Uh, I'll come back, swing back around and uh, show you how I set the gap on that in one second. But I did not put the bracket back on. I just think it's easier to mount the sensor to the bracket off the, the unit. So just going to put those screws in there hand tight so they don't get lost. One other thing I want to talk about, um, make sure that you Loctite these two screws that hold the um, pinion nut cap on. Um, those are, you know, that's, there's going to be some vibrations there. You definitely don't want that to come loose. Uh, also, when you put your starter shaft in, um, while it's a good idea to kind of snug the shaft up against that bearing, you don't want to really squeeze on this and tighten those up. That's going to over preload the bearings. You need to have a, that needs to be very, very free in there so that the, uh, it doesn't rob you of power. It also will make it very difficult to get your starter wand out if um, that's binding. So. Um, all back together, nice, very clean, all CNC aluminum. I, I'm really impressed with the quality of this kit. Uh, everything's going together great. Next, I'm going to set this stuff to the side, and I'm going to go ahead and tear the tail box apart. Again, we're going to uh, focus on sub-assemblies tonight. So next, uh, when I come back, I'll have the uh, tail box all unwrapped and uh, partially torn down. Okay, guys, what you can see is I've got the tail hub and uh, tail rotor completely disassembled. Um, this is all pretty straightforward. You guys have probably seen this on many, many helis, but I'm going to tell you, take it through it anyway. Uh, this is a true thrusted tail. What that means is you have um, radial bearings on inner and the outer of the, of the, oops, I guess my iron's a little magnetic. You have radial bearings that go on the inner and outer of the hub. Sandwiched between them, you have a true thrust bearing, inner and outer, and a shim on each side. Now it is very important that when you're putting this back together, you find out which one of these hub bearings races has the larger OD ID. In my case, that one's the large ID, this one is the small ID, meaning this is the outer thrust bearing. This goes up, up on the side of the grip closest to the jam to the scrub grub screw. This being the larger OD ID race goes on the inside of the grip. Um, gives the thrust bearing a little float so it can disengage when it needs to. Uh, thrust bearing, there are lots of arguments on whether the cage goes out, cage goes in. I like to face the cage in so the centrifugal forces actually throw the grease up into the balls rather than throwing them out. I've seen people do it either way. I'm going to mount mine cage facing in. Um, do not be surprised if you have to use a little heat to get these out. Um, it's again, tolerances on Matt's kits are very, very tight. Um, a couple seconds with a heat gun they'll pop, and pop them on the counter, they'll come right out. Uh, 
you need to fully disassemble all the parts in this kit. Everything is pre-assembled for parts accountability only. Um, there's no way of knowing if the thrust bearings are in and out or right. There's no, there's sure, certainly no Loctite on these screws and absolutely no grease on those bearings. You're going to want to completely tear it down. Also, don't forget to Loctite the balls on the grips themselves. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera. Uh, I'm not going to make, make bore you while I reassemble and, glue, and lube. Um, the assembly order is pretty straightforward. You end up with a thrust bearing on the outside. You're going to put the large OD race first cage, uh, short OD, uh, small OD, excuse me, ID race on the outside. And the shim goes between the outside race and the outside radial bearing. Okay, guys, one more tip. Um, I actually like to, when I'm greasing uh, thrust bearings, and uh, tail parts. I actually build the assembly backwards on one of my drivers. So in this case, so this side of my driver becomes the grub screw side. So I've got the outside radial bearing, the little shim, the small ID race, and then I actually drop the cage on there. Uh, those of you who have seen uh, my bills in the past have heard me say this, but you're going to get to hear me say it again. The importance of quality lubricants is is uh, unmeasurable. Um, I do like the Bodo Lube on this um, high performance synthetic grease uh, for bearings. I use this on all thrust bearings and lubing the spindle shafts and, and uh, dampers. Um, if you go cheap on the grease, you're going to find yourself needing to do maintenance in your head a lot more often. Bodo Lube holds up well. I know some guys like to use the uh, Triflow silicone. All good options. Um, just make sure if you're using the Triflow, you use the red Triflow. That's um, intended for uh, high performance joints. The silver kind of um, Vaseline looking Triflow is for um, like torque tube bearing, uh, lubing the rubbers on torque tube bearings or even, th even the, the dampers. But for thrust bearings, uh, um, if you're going to use Triflow, use the red Triflow. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble both grips, get everything Loctited, and I'll be right back. Okay, one more thing I want to do before I get this tail put all completely back together. Um, another tip for you. Um, as we've talked about before, um, it's mentioned in the manual. You see it on the forums all the time. I'm going to go into it again. Um, the links on the Synergy helicopters, these plastic links are molded. Um, now, Synergy does use a 5.5 millimeter. So, uh, a link ball, a lot larger than, uh, than um, a lot of the manufacturers out there, so you're going to make sure you have a quality um, uh, ball link tool that has a large enough opening to clear 5.5 millimeters. Flybarsrotors.com has a nice set. Uh, I use theirs. I put a little S on it with my Sharpie so I know this is my Synergy ones because it's a little too big to work on some of the other brands. Um, one of the things you, you strongly recommend that you do is that you pick up one of these Bodo sizers. This is a uh, ball link sizing tool. If your ball link sizing tool has a five and a half millimeter bit, go to town. The uh, Bodo sizer does come with the four and a half and uh, smaller um, ball sizers, so you can use it on all brands. But what you want to do with this is you're going to want to make sure these are um, reamed out and and, um, and um, cleaned up from the factory because of tolerance differences in molded parts. It is very likely that when you pop these together. do it real quick that that's going to be very snug which this one is and the simplest thing I can um, to do to help prevent tail performance problems is to ensure the time of build <coughs> excuse me you do everything in your power to make this tail setup as mechanically accurate and mechanically smooth as possible so I at this point before I get the tail completely assembled I'm actually going to take my Bodo sizer and size these links for the tail pitch slider. It's a lot easier to do it now when you can manipulate this grip a little easier than after you got the entire tail box put together and you're trying to fumble with that. So, little tip for you, go ahead and size these links now before you put the hub back together.